Here's another example, and this is sort of a mega example because it's going to run over four slides, that illustrates the notion of mutually independent random variables. Let A, B, and C be mutually independent uniform 0, 1 random variables. Find the probability that the quadratic equation AX squared plus BX plus C equals 0 has real roots. Well, before the A, B, and C became uppercase, you're used to seeing quadratics look like this. And you are used to the quadratic formula, which says the two roots of this are negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC, all divided by 2a. So our quadratic here with random coefficients, could call it a random quadratic equation, the quadratic equation will have real roots whenever b squared minus 4ac, the discriminant, is greater than 0. So that's the probability of having real roots. And you could put in greater than or equal to, but because these are continuous random variables, either way will be fine. So in this particular case, what we want to calculate when it says find the probability that these, this equation has real roots is we want the probability that b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0. Now the next thing we need to do is determine the joint density function of the coefficients a, b, and c. Because they are mutually independent, the joint will be the product of the marginals, and that will be f sub a of a times f sub b of b times f sub c of c. And in this particular case, because we have uniform 0, 1 random variables, this will just be 1 times 1 times 1, which gives you 1 on the support. 0 is less than a is less than 1. 0 is less than b is less than 1 and 0 is less than c is less than 1. Now this next page shows the geometry associated with all of this. We start out with the quadratic b squared, I'm sorry, the discriminant b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0. The first step to finding out what that looks like is to plot b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0. Now here is the unit cube and the unit cube is the space where the random variables a, b, and c are defined. If you were to take this equation right here and set for example b is equal to 1, now what you get is 4ac is equal to 1, that is a hyperbola that lies right here. Next thing I'd like to do is set a equal to 1 and that will be the trace in this particular face of the uh, cube and when you set a equal to 1 you get b squared is equal to 4c and that is a quadratic that looks like this Next thing I'd like to do is set c equal to 1 and see what the trace looks like up here on the top of the cube. When you set c equal to 1, you get b squared equals 4a, and that also is a quadratic. Now if you look a little bit further into this equation, you will find that it also lies on these two axes right here. So I hope you're seeing a surface developing 
that goes through these two axes and comes up in a fashion. And we're trying to find the probability b squared is greater than 4ac. So it is the area above this. So if this dot right here is a point that is on the surface that I've described here that passes through the unit cube, and this point, let's say right here, is the corresponding point in the face of the cube at b equals 1, then what we want to do is we want to do a triple integral that captures the volume in here and that will be the associated probability. So keep in mind we want the area b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0 and that is the same as b squared is greater than 4ac or also b is greater than the square root of 4ac. So when we set up that triple integral you will see some of those appearing. Before we set up that triple integral, it is worth drawing the level surface associated with the side of the cube at b equals 1. When you do that, you will be drawing 4ac is equal to 1, and that looks like the following. Here is a, and here is c. So there's the unit square. And furthermore, 4ac is equal to 1 looks something like this. This point right here is 1 fourth 1. And this point right here is 1 1 fourth. So you can see already a single triple integral is not going to do it. We're trying to cover this area right here. So we're going to have to divide it into two pieces in this fashion with respect to c. So the probability that b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0 is going to have to be two triple integrals. And here's the first of them. And fortunately, the integrand is 1. That helps a little bit. So you've got db, dc, and da. And then there will be a second triple integral. Once again, you're going to be integrating 1, db, dc, da. So the next thing to do is set up the limits on these triple integrals. Well, first of all, with respect to b, the lower limit will always be the square root of 4ac, which we had on the previous page, and that will go up to 1. And that will be on both of these triple integrals, square root of 4ac up to 1. Now, with respect to c, what we have to do is we have to do this on two different pieces. So we're going to do it for a values between 0 and 1 fourth and between 0 and 1 fourth for a the lower limit is is c equals 0 which is this right here the upper limit is c is equal to 1 and those are for strips that run from a equals 0 up to a equals 1 fourth So that takes care of this portion. And then when you move for a values from 1 fourth to 1, the lower limit remains 0. But the upper limit now is going to be this curve. And that curve, if you solve for c, is 1 over 4a. And those values of a run from 1 fourth up to 1. So these start at 1 fourth and they go up to 1 and there are the setup the, the, the integration limits on the two triple integral. Next to calculate these values in maple 
Here are the two triple integrals. So int of int of int, the integrand is one in both cases. The, uh, the B limits run from the square root of 4AC to 1, C from 0 to 1, A from 0 to 1 fourth. And then here is the plus to add the triple integrals. Here's the second triple integral. Again, runs from square root of 4AC up to 1 with respect to B. C runs from 0 to 1 over 4A. And finally, A runs from 1 fourth to 1. When you put those into Maple, again, you could do these uh, triple integrals by hand, but Maple will do them as well. You wind up with 536 plus the natural log of 4 divided by 12, and that is 0.2544 to 4 decimals. If you're nervous about whether or not you set up those two triple integrals right, you can also do a Monte Carlo simulation in this case. Here are 100,000 replications. Of course, this is our code here. And what you do is you take 100,000 uniforms and put them into uppercase A, 100,000 uniform 0, 1s in B, and then 100,000 uniform 0, 1s in C. When you calculate b squared minus 4ac, you now have a vector of 100,000 discriminants. That is compared to 0. And R knows to make this 100,000 zeros. So it makes 100,000 comparison. Calculates the average of those. That will estimate the probability. And notice that these numbers right here bounce around 0.2544. And that is support for this particular analytic solution.